Hello everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to a brand new Let's Play series of Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiserreich. So today, we're going to be taking a trip with a little bit to the land down under, we're going to play Australia, or Australasia, I guess to be a little bit more, uh, more specific. I'm sorry, New Zealand, for forgetting about you. It has been a few years since we've at last played Australia, and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be just doing a, a, a very simple uh, campaign. We're not going to be going down any uh, crazy paths here, we're just going to go status quo. And I've been, I was thinking about this, um, because obviously I have to think about series I'm going to do for Holy 4 in the future. And it's like, it's always so difficult to make any, uh, series where you just stay status quo. Because I, under, I understand that the status quo is, is boring, quote-unquote. You always want to do something a little bit wacky. You know, you can go national populist, you can go socialist, um, or, or whatever. And then obviously, depending on what country you are, you might want to go different paths. You know, if you start socialist, you might want to go nationalist. If you start nationalist, you might want to go democratic. Usually, you don't stay on the on the status quo path. So I imagine, like, if you're a mod developer, like, making a mod where you just make the status quo interesting, I've got to imagine it's got to be a, a tough job, right? How do you make not changing anything an interesting series to do? Anyway, that's what we're going to be doing. We're not going to be doing anything too crazy. Uh, currently, we have the authoritarian uh, Democrats in charge. We're probably going to go either market liberal or social conservative. I still want to do. I, I still got. I want to graph all of the series that I've ever done to see actually what are the most common ideologies I played as. I've got to imagine. I think market liberal might be the least popular one that I've done. So maybe maybe we'll do that. Anyways, that that's my uh, preamble done here. So the status of confederation. Born in 1924 as a result of the Consolidation of Resources Act, the Australian Confederation is a combination of the British Australian Dominions, Australia, New Zealand, as well as the territories of British New Guinea and Fiji. The years into Villa Creek have brought great change in hardship. The war strained both social and, uh, and the economy, uh, which in Australia manifested itself in a short-lived Melbourne commune. Although it is owned by the then-ruling Labour government and put down by demobilized Australian Imperial Force veterans, this resulted in the implementation of the Emergency Protocols, the suspension of elections, and the appointment of William Birdwood as Governor General. Uh, then the uh, British Revolution in 1925 shook the Empire to its core, and the Australasia was unable to prevent the loss of its territories to the Germans. More than 10 years on, the situation now is um, still unstable as the economy remains stagnant, and the Mexican dissident continues to grow with Birdwood, alongside with his uh, ally, Billy Hughes, Nationalist Party, barely holding things together. Selections in the antipodes were suspended by the Emergency Protocols enacted in 1923, which also led to dissolving of the autonomy of the new separate uh, New Zealand Parliament. However, elections are now set for March of this year after Stanley Bruce successfully campaigned for the reintroduction. Governor General Birdwood was forced to make the concession when Bruce defeated Hughes for the leadership of the Nationalist Party. Bruce's decision uh, not to act as unelected Prime Minister resulted in the expulsion of his faction from the Nationalist Party, and Hughes recalled as Prime Minister. However, the public would not accept the government's reigning on its commitments, and Austra Australasia is Ill, uh, can ill afford to repeat in 1923, as the specter of Melbourne remains fresh in the minds of many. So yeah, we're, we're gonna go either... Actually, let's see, do we have a, uh, a choice here? Victory for the Guard, Victory for the Syndicalist, Democratic, uh, the De Democratic Australasia is what we're gonna be doing here. Compromise with Labour. I guess it, it doesn't really look like it matters who exactly we choose. Social Democrat, Social Liberal, Mark Liberal. Okay, so it looks like it, it basically it does not matter whatsoever. We'll probably remain in the Entente. I don't see a reason to become um, a Republic. Does this kick us out of the Entente? I actually do not know. It is true that we began calling the British. We cannot forever owe our origins to the motherland. Can I ignore the heavy hand which the British have employed in our nation? I'm guessing this leaves the Entente, and of course we're not going to be doing that. Observer rights in the Legation Council. When the British Empire collapsed in 925, the then governor of Hong Kong invited troops from Germany and other great powers were presidents in China to occupy the British concessions to perfect them from the Chinese. This sparked a covert conflict between American and Japanese Germans, which finally ended by America in 1928 when the Legation Cities, officially known as the International Mandate for the Chinese Concessions, were formed. Uh, as is the case throughout the world, though Germany makes, um, uh, as it is the case throughout the world, though Germany makes use of our imperial possessions, we still theoretically maintain control and ownership of them. Though so it is in uh, China where our extensive uh, concessions guarantee us a seat in the Legation Council. 
by that same coin. However, the German refuses to recognize the government of Ottawa as the responsible uh, British government denies us a vote in Shanghai. As a guarantee of British interest in the Far East, Canterbury has uh, generally been responsible for active maintenance of the Chinese concessions. As such, we have influence and opportunity to try and gain recognition from our concessions and regain our voice in the council. Or at the very least, achieve uh, the return of Hong Kong. So Hong Kong is currently owned by yeah, the Legation cities. Currently, they are market liberal. The market liberal is the pro-America side. I think, let me just take a guess. I think we're social conservative, right? The Hong Kong Club, shit. Um, SMC. I know the China agency is Japan. You are Germany, obviously. The Vermilion Society. I honestly don't remember which. Uh... Yeah, we're market. We're market liberal. No, we're not. We are. What's well, this? We have ten percent control. Which 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 one are we? Ten percent. Yeah. Okay. We are the Hong Kong Club. It actually makes perfect sense because. We were just talking about how we don't hold uh, control over Hong Kong. Today, the nation is celebrating the Confederation of Australia and uh, Australasia. And while the Confederation was not voluntary, um, having been initially formed by the British invocation of the Con Conversation of Resort Act in 1944, it has still brought many benefits to both Australia and New Zealand. Or such is the common belief. Crowds are lining the city streets from one side of the country to the other in order to celebrate the occasion. Also, we should get all of our units together. We have 14 divisions, which I will admit is not a ton. And where do I send you right now? I guess for now we'll send you... Here, though, I mean, we're kind of in like a funny situation, which is like we're never really going to have to defend Australia directly. Probably. By the way, did I not take any uh, focus? That is my bad. I will 100% I will admit that. That's my bad. Because stay in the economy first. We lost three days of progress. It's honest. It's not that bad. Also, we haven't, we haven't researched anything. It has been a faulty start to a series, but that's okay. And we haven't built anything either. Do 60 60. We've anything better in New Zealand? We do in the uh, South Island. We'll take that for now. We're okay on everything here. We are missing aircraft, close air support. Is that all we're missing? Close air support, naval bombers, we're not going to even worry about too much. But yeah, we'll go with the interwar close air support. It seems okay to me. Get you guys underway, get you underway, give you soft attack plus 3% or no bonus whatsoever. And this seems, I would say, pretty good. I mean, I know our manpower is pretty bad. Um, how many people even live in Australia? Australasia. 8.4 million. Currently get uh, 1.28. We have been bled dry. I'm assuming that has to do with Gallipoli. We got the Anzac Spirit. I mean, that's just like a flat, straight up upgrade. I'm happy with that. Economic depression and an oversized fleet. How big is our fleet? I mean, it is 31 ships, which I mean, for Australasia would be a pretty substantial navy. I don't know how much, how many, how many um, boats does Australia actually have in real life? I don't know. But the Victorian bushfires. The state of Victoria has been hit by heavy bushfires in the northeast and the southwest. Because of intense heat and drought over the last few years, much of rural Victoria has dried up, leaving plenty of fuel for the flames. The fires at this point are so incredibly intense that the ash and smoke can be seen from New Zealand. Firefighters with the aid of the state government are currently trying to combat the disaster, with the flames already threatening several major cities and causing considerable panic. Yeah, you know what? I want to take... Give me... Just give me a... Uh, a 2% stability hit. I mean, we're at 77%, which I'll be honest, is pretty fucking good. The ousted King of Britain, George V, has finally succumbed to his illness that had plagued him since the revolution swept through the home isles. His son Edward has ascended the throne of the British Empire, including that uh, of the Australia Australasian Dominions. While many Australia Australasia <laughs> mourn, there are others who um, the King's death has resurrected memories of the Ville Creek and the disaster of Gallipoli in particular. And they have taken to the streets to demand a separation of the nation from the British Crown, as well as the Entente Alliance. So it's going to give a little bit more of a bonus to the Cyniclist. Again, we're not going to be going, um... How many trains do we have? Do I want to comment to your trains? We have zero? Wait. We have 13. I will take 15. Again, I don't believe the, the power of the Cyniclist is really going to matter too, too much for us. Because obviously we're not gonna be uh, we're not gonna be electing them or we're having a revolution here. 
The fires of Victoria have now finally been extinguished, thanks to the efforts of local firefighters as well as the overdue uh, dense rainfall. This victory has come at the cost of 71 lives, over 1,000 homes, and the burning of almost 135,000 hectares of land. Uh, currently, Judge Leonard Stratton has been uh, selected by the uh, uh, to lead a royal commission into what had led to disastrous fires. Though many suspect farmers who graze in rural areas to be responsible due to their long-standing practice of burning uh, brush to clear new land. Okay. So we're currently negative. Si or we're currently at 67% stability. I mean, we did steal a lot of trains from people, which, I mean, I can understand why you'd be a little bit upset if the government just came and took all of your trains. If they took over all of my trains, I would also be a little pissed off. But maybe that's maybe that's just me. I don't know. Okay, Cerulean's been elected in France, which I feel like doesn't happen too much. You don't really ever see the um, Solarians actually win. Um, you don't usually see them win. I feel like usually the anarchists actually win more often than not. So what do we want? Do we want to liberalize, privatize, or reform the bureaucracy? Do you all... Well, so you give me... Oh, God, there's actually like so many modifiers here. Okay, so no matter what, they all give you the bonus for recovery. You are negative 30% consumer goods for 180 days. You are factory output for 180 days. And then you are political power. I mean, 0.5 per day for eight. That's actually a lot. So that's 0. 0.500. So that's... Not, I, guess, I guess it's only like 90 political power. But we'd also get bonuses off of that. You get a 3% bonus, so you know what? Never mind. We get basically fucking nothing. So it's 90 political power. A little bit more for consumer goods. And then privatization efforts. Let's go liberalize. I mean, I, I was saying that we don't ever really go market liberal, so... Let's go market liberal on this one. The bypass if we do not have the national spirit economic depression. I'm assuming that's going to happen no matter what. And obviously, obviously, we're not going to join the war in Afghanistan. That is a mistake. Because we're just going to take a big stability hit for, for no fucking reason. We're not a puppet, right? No, we're not. So, no reason for me to click the yes button to get inv involved in a war there, which is just going to cause stability hits for no reason. Special conference of the Labour Party. Today, the Australasian Labour Party convened in a special session in Sydney, where the former Premier of New South Wales, Jack Lang, was readmitted into the party after having been excluded for five years. Lang originally left the party and formed his own due to disagreements in leadership after his dismissal from the government by the contemporary uh, governor of NS New South Wales, Philip Game. Uh, he fell out of popularity and sought to rejoin the party. A powerful orator and or populist through and through, the re minutes of Lang has caused cons um, <laughs> consternation among the more leftist members of the Labour Party, whom alongside the uh, majority of trade union activists, seeing him as more of a social feudal a feudalist inherently hostile to true socialist doctrine. Uh, it seems that the Australi Australasian Labour Party is heading into turbulent times, given the imminent election. Okay, so a little bit of stability loss. More power for the Social Democrats. We don't, this, this doesn't matter, right? I mean, who is actually the biggest party at the moment? It is the Conservatives. Labour only has 2%. I mean, the Cynicalists are like the second most powerful party. I guess technically the third most powerful party in the, in the, in the country. The Australasian Guard. Originally formed in 1925, the Australasian Guard is a staunchly nationalist and jingoistic movement, which traces its roots back to the paramilitary organization, the League of National Security. Comprised of former servicemen returning from the Ville Creek after the backing of influential Australasians, many of these men helped put down the 1923 Melbourne Commune. In the years following the Melbourne Uprising, the Guard has continued to support the government, with many supporters joining the extended um, security forces available to governor generals and assisting in suppressing left-wing activities. The coming return of democratic rule has caused an upset among the far right, however, um, who fear for the reemergence of the long-suppressed later movement and that the uh, Nationalist Party, divided as it is, will be unable to maintain the status quo. Due to these factors, the Guard's leaders, Eric Campbell, has decided that it will uh, take place in the elections at the Centre Party, um, despite not uh, inconsiderable <laughs> uh, levels of popular support. At present, is unsure what impact it will have. I can't read. I don't know if I just, like, am losing brain cells by the moment or, like, what's going on. Okay, Japanese troops are garrisoned uh, Taijin. Look, it, it, that's... Do I, do I care about Taijin? Not really. 
Because, I mean, right now, China Age is at 15%. Is there anything I can do to boost... Um, support here? No. Prerequisites. Legation cities to be appointed official governor of Hong Kong. Current ruling party is not social conservative. Not social conservative. So you need to not be... The Hong Kong Club. Okay. The first free election in over a decade, which many are calling Bruce's election, uh, looks set to return a majority to the Australia, uh, United Australia, Australasia Party. However, the Labour and Country uh, parties are campaigning vigorously, while the Nationalists struggle to retain their core vote with the uh, left voting UAP and the right declaring for the Guard Centre Party. Uh, many are at least grateful that the Campbell Centre Party seemingly has no chance of actually winning, though it seems likely that they will make a great showing. So we want to go for the country party. We want to go for the... Um... Okay, so let's see. What actually happens here? The ruling party. So you are... Party popularity, stability modifier, plus 10%. Point two political power gain. Honestly, that's that, that's pretty good. Point, like, point two is quite a bit. You are... 8% political power gain, 5% stability. I would say less great. Now, the Conservatives having a flat negative 15% consumer goods is also kind of crazy. We're at 40% right now. I mean... And you also get a stability boost off of this. Like, I think you seem pretty good, but like I was saying at the beginning of this episode, we very rarely go market liberal. So we are going to go, we're going to take the stability hit, we're going to get the market liberals in here. And yeah, point two, point two political power. I think that'll eventually will pay for itself. Because that is over the course of a year. What is 365 divided by 5? What's 360 divided by 5? 180, 90 is divided by 4. I guess I can actually like 75 political power a year. Maybe it's actually not that great. Anyways, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the Australian Guard has emerged from the election far stronger than when it went in. Eric Campbell's center party, while failing to uh, take any parliamentary seats, they managed to secure a large percentage of the popular vote, mostly at the expense of the Nationalist. Despite this, the lack of uh, coherent strategy, as well as a hostile media reception, was clear hindrances to them. That's going to be another 5% stability hit. Look, so it doesn't even matter if we took the other guys anyways. It, it, look, it, it's fine. The Cyniclist March. Responding to the election results, which the Labour Party claims are rigged against her candidates, radicals uh, supported by the Australasian Council of Trade Unions held an illegal march in several of Austra Australasia's cities today. Uh, they are protesting the continued suppression of unions, and several of the marches ended in clashes with both the police and local paramilitary groups. All the marches were successfully dispersed, but the leaders have sworn that they will continue to resist the new government, and that without freedom of the Australasian Confederation cannot truly call itself democracy. Gonna be another 5% stability hit. We're now currently below 50%. Fantastic, thank you. William Birchwood's uh, tenure as Governor General saw a vast expansion of powers available to the position, which he used to maintain order in Oceania at the expense of democracy and civil liberties. Birdwood, a British general from the Ville Krieg, was imposed upon Australasia by an emperor fearful of revolt, but times have changed, and a newly elected government uh, could use this opportunity to replace him with the well liked governor of New South Wales, Sir Alexander Hoare uh, Roosevelt. While this move would be popular with many, others suggested that the opportunity exists to invite a member of the royal family to assume the rule and thus put Australasia more firmly within the sphere of the Empire and our fellow Entente allies. Well, I think it would make sense for us to... Um, to appoint an actual uh, um, Australasian to the uh, position, and we get like a 10% stability boost back, which I'm, which I'm happy to see. Okay, the military sees power in Mexico, so that could see a... Pro Entente Mexico, which I think would be quite nice. Um, and Britain's just done generic syndicalist, so not nothing too crazy there at all. But what about you? We don't care about the supply hubs. We're never really going to be able to make any use of them. Oh, and the Imperial Conference? Absolutely. We will go. Now, I believe this is just a generic event. I don't think there's anything specific for Australasia in, um, in this event tree. But we're not going to pay too much mind to it. it. It's the same thing like whenever you get like the... Um, like the events with the IEDC or the events for the... Um, 
the the Ninth International Congress. They happen all the time. They don't really matter. So what do we have for you? You are research speed goes up a little bit. We get five percent bonus for these two focuses. I mean, actually getting an extra research slot pretty early on would actually be quite nice. So I think we will be uh, going for you because we're at three and four. Of course, uh, that's a thirty-three percent increase. How do you say no to that one? Okay, Republicans in Iran. That's for Germany. And uh, Eon Idris, the Cattle King. Leading Australasia writer uh, Eon Idris today published his latest novel, The Cattle King. It follows the life of recently deceased Sir Sidney Kidman, an entrepreneur and pasteurist, um, who owned or co-owned large areas of land in Australia in his lifetime. Kidman became widely popular due to his support of the government of the uh, Indivisible Creek and charitable organizations. The book looks to be Australasia's bestseller of 1936, and many are drawing parallels between Kidman and the exiled white Rahaj Charles Vanier Brook, which is sure to boost Brook's popularity. But I will say, well, that is going to be a good time for us to end off this first episode. So if you enjoyed, thumbs up. Not joking, always thumbs down. You want to see more, subscribe, and goodbye.